the pale-faced lightning. 20 miles from the capital of Arizona stands Mount Superstition, the scene of many traditions, the object of many fears. Two centuries ago, a tribe of Pueblo dwarves arrived near it and tilled the soil and tended their flocks about the settlements that grew along their line of march. They were little people, four feet high, but they were a thousand strong and clever. They were peaceful, like all intelligent people, and the mystery surrounding their incantations and sun worship was more potent than a show of arms to frighten away those natural assassins, the Apaches. After they had lived near the mountain for five years, the little people learned that the Zunis were advancing from the south and made preparations for defense. Their sheep were concealed in obscure valleys. Provisions, tools, and arms were carried up the mountain. Piles of stone were placed along the edges of cliffs commanding the passes. This work was superintended by a woman with a white face, fair hair, and commanding form, who was held in reverence by the dwarves. And she it was, the Helen of the New World, Troy, who was causing this trouble. For the Zunis claimed her on the ground that they had brought her from the waters of the rising sun, and that it was only to escape an honorable marriage with their chief that she had fled to the dwarves. Be that as it might, the Zunis marched on, meeting with faint resistance until, on a bright afternoon, they massed on the slope of the mountain, 700 in number. The Apaches, expecting instant defeat of the little men, watched from neighboring hills the advance of the invaders as they climbed nimbly toward the stone fort on the top of the slope, brandishing clubs and stone spears, and bragging, as the fashion of a red man is, and sometimes of a white one. At a pool outside the walls stood a pale woman, queenly and calm, and as her white robe and brown hair fluttered in the wind, both her people and the foe looked upon her with admiration. But a hundred yards away the Zunis rushed toward her with outstretched arms, whereupon she stooped, picked up an earthen jar, emptied its contents into the pool, and ran back. In a moment sparks and balls of fire leaped from crevices in the rocks, and as they touched the Indians many fell dead. Others plunged blindly over the cliffs and were dashed to pieces. In a few minutes the remainder of the force was in full retreat, and not an arrow had been shot. The Apaches, though stricken with terror at these pyrotechnics, overcame the memory of them sufficiently in a couple of years to attempt the sack of the fort on their own account. But the queen repelled them as she had forced back the Zunis, and with even greater slaughter. From that time, the dwarfs were never harmed again, but they went away.